This is how to create a custom tub from a 2D DWG in Vectorworks. So I'm going to start with a blank document, as I always do when importing a file. And uh, by default in Vectorworks 2020, scale is at a quarter inch equals a foot. I'm going to change that to one to one for now. And under file, I'm going to import a DWG. And uh, here's the uh, file that I downloaded from the manufacturer. So I'm, I'm importing that using inches, fractional format. Generally let Vectorworks decide what scale to use and I can fix that later if I need to and hit OK. And uh, here's the tub. Uh, now these are just 2D drawings, uh, as you can see. And um, for now, uh, well, one thing to consider is every, every object is going to be different. So there may be a, a different approach to take. But given that I have a profile here of the side of the tub and the end of the tub, what I'm going to do is uh, draw both of those, um, redraw them, extrude them, overlap the extrusions, and then take it from there. So uh, one thing is, is if there's a profile like this sort of S curve, that's useful to preserve in the model. But things like corner radii here, uh, that's actually going to create a more segmented sort of model. So I'm not going to use those, but I am going to inspect them to see what they, uh, what they are. So if I look at this one, you can see that that's a one inch radius. This one over here, let's use the zoom loop, likewise a one inch radius. So that's that's useful to know. So I'm going to delete these little one inch radii and you'll see why. Uh, and the other thing is, is that the tub has this lip for deck mounting, which is represented in this end elevation. So actually this line, if I were to look at just the profile of the tub itself, this line goes all the way to the top here, or should. So I'm going to use the uh, join command, and I'll just extend that up to here, and extend that up to here. And then I'll go ahead and uh, join these as well. So having done that, I can uh, select these two and uh, I've customized my workspace to select connected objects. So it's a little right click. I've selected all of those and then I'm modify and compose. So now I have a polyline and I can go ahead and close it. And uh, these also I can go ahead and modify and compose. So uh, I'm going to change these to screen plane objects, not layer plane, and close them. And then I'm going to go under view, uh, standard views. I'm going to go to a uh, front view. These don't move because they're screen plane objects. So this profile of the tub I can see is um, has a total length of five foot four almost, just a sh shade less. So I'm going to take this one and extrude it by five foot four. I might even go a little further. And then it has a width of not quite 30 inches. So I'm going to now go to a uh, left view. So um, under view, standard views, left and I'm going to take this tub here and profile and extrude that about 30 inches. So now when I go to a top plan view here's uh, one of the extrusions and here's the other one. So I'm going to select them both and align them to be centered in both the X and the Y direction. It doesn't really matter where I do this. So let me go ahead and zoom in and render them. 
So these are both wire frames. Let me give them a solid fill. So I've got these two profiles. And I want to make sure that they're perfectly aligned. So under uh, Modify Align 3D, Align Distribute 3D, I will align their uh, maxima to align. So in other words, the topmost uh, geometry of both of those forms is going to align to each other. So they're registered to their tops. And now under Model, I'm going to um, create an intersected solid. And so you can see that I have this profile. The solid, which uh, in a end view looks like one profile and in a side view looks like the other profile. Minus, of course, the little filleted edges. So um, it's more efficient to create those fillets on the 3D model than it is to try to create them in the 2D geometry that when extruded creates the 3D model. So I'm going to use my flyover tool to get um, kind of under the tub and that's so that I can see all these edges and then from the 3D menu I'm going to go to the fillet edge tool and remember that when I looked at those radii they they uh, in the line drawings they had a one inch radius those fillets so I'll just take an inch here and in the settings here I can choose a constant radius or I could uh, have a variable radius. I don't need to get fancy here. I'll just do a constant radius. And then with select faces and all edges deselected, that means I'm going to select edges individually. So that gives me more control, but it's a little bit more work. So I'm holding down the shift key as I'm selecting all of these edges. And I want to make sure that I get them all. So if I need to move in, zoom in there, I can do that. And then I can just uh, pan or I can use the zoom loop but careful not to let go of the shift key and then this doesn't have that little back so now I've selected all the edges okay, and I'll just click the check mark and now you can see that it's a, a nice little fillet. There we go. And then now to make it more tub-like, I'm going to shell it. Now, I don't really know how thick this tub is, but I'll just pick arbitrarily 3 8 um, Maybe it's half an inch. I could check the literature. And again, in the settings, I can either shell to the inside or the outside. I'll just shell to the outside. And I'm going to click on a face, and that face will be the opening or the hollow area of the shell. So I'll click on that face, and then click the check mark, and you can see that it becomes a shell. Now let me go to top plan view, and there it is. Now I still have the top of the I still have the, that lip, right, that uh, according to this dimension is an inch and a half, and I want to include that in the model. So um, I'll just trace over this over here with a rectangle, right, six feet by three feet, and I'll extrude it an inch and a half because that's what the dimension is given by the manufacturer. And uh, let me just take this shell that I created and rotate it around. And I will align it left and top. And then I will realign centers and centers. And it's not quite perfectly where the line drawing says it should be. Um, here the line drawing is showing a two inch radius, so if I really wanted to be very specific about my model, I would have a, a variable radius here, right? or maybe what I could do is I'm going to go back and edit this shell, 
with the command left bracket, and then I can it gets me back to the fillet, right? And I could um, edit the fillet and so on. But I'm just going to go with what I have, even though it's not a hundred percent accurate. So here's that extrusion that I made. I'll go into a little perspective view or an isometric view. I'm going to do another fillet. This time I'll give it, um, say, um, one and three eighths inch. And I'm going to choose faces. Okay. And I'll just, just select the top here and hit OK. So you can see that it creates this fillet for the top. Let me go to a side view. Again, I've got a keyboard shortcut for that. Select these two, and I could align top. Okay. Now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the tub. So Command D, I duplicate it. It's in place. And I'm going to ungroup it, or undo it. And so the ungroup command turns it from a shell to a fillet. If I take these two and move them up, say, five feet, just to separate them from the model so you can see what's going on. Okay. So I've taken those two, and now I'm going to subtract solids and delete that. And so now my uh, little uh, tub here has subtracted from the top. Only I forgot to do it a step, so let me undo that. Or actually, I'll just go right into the subtraction. Go to a wireframe view, go to the underside here. And what I should have done is this top, I should have also shelled that. So I can go into the group, I can shell it, get the face. So now I'm shelling the bottom and make it to the inside. And now when I uh, exit the solid subtraction and render. You can see that um, this little lip is a lip. So now I can move it back down negative five feet and take these two things and add solids. And if I really want to be very precise. Oh, I've got it turned around. That's why things don't look right. There we go. That's better. I want to be precise. I'll just um, draw a circle and extrude that. Go to a side view. Just stretch that extrusion down some arbitrary amount. Uh, I'll go ahead and subtract solids. So now you can see that I've got a drain. Okay. <clears throat> and then finally, I need the 2D geometry. I'm just going to move this over 10 feet to the left right now. And um, I could just select all this. Oops, let me just get rid of all these dimensions. So I could uh, right click on that, select connected objects, compose, select connected objects, compose, trace that with a rectangle, send it to back. So now I've got all that, move that 10 feet over as well. So I've got these 2D components. I'll move them to the screen 
plane is the other layer plane. And then just select all that, modify, create symbol. It's a tub, right, 72 by 36, ADA. Plan projection center is fine. There's my symbol in 2D. And then I want it to, um, I'm going to go to a 3D view and I'll edit the 3D symbol. And I want that symbol to be in the right place in the Z direction. So typically what I do is I just throw a locus in here and I set its X, Y, and Z to zero. And so that tells me where the insertion point is for that symbol. And so uh, because I might put that tub in a plinth of various heights, a tub base, I'll just select this solid subtraction and just move it down and snap it to that symbol like that. So now the top of the tub is at zero. And so whenever I insert that tub, I'll just set the Z of the insertion of the symbol to be equal to whatever height above the finished floor that I want it to be. And then the only thing I really need to do is set the classes correctly. So I'll just create some new classes and uh, go to uh, a previous um, project, uh, just picking one at random. So I've got some uh, pretty simple little plumbing classes. And uh, import those classes. I'll just set this to be to the plumbing class. And then in top plan view, all these can be a lighter line rate. And there's our symbol.